Coinciding with the release of Blender 4.0, all heads were turning to Blender's official website to get a glimpse of the new exciting features it's gonna introduce. People were excited to put their hands on the new release, only to get hit with the message, the website is down. Many people last week went to social media to report that they can't access the website anymore. The reason why a ton of people couldn't access the website and all of its subdomains and services was because of a cyber attack known as Distributed Denial of Service or DDoS. The website was hit by 1.5 billion malicious requests bringing it to its knees and subsequently preventing a ton of people from accessing the website. So what really happened? But before we continue, I want to remind you guys that today is Cyber Monday the last day of the sale. So this is a great opportunity to get yourself some of the best annals, courses, shaders, you name it. On the Blender market, for example, they are having big discounts, up to 30 or 35%. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of the top Blender annals and courses that you will ever need. Now back to the video. In a blog post, Blender COO Francesco Sidi talked at length about the topic. Between 18 and 22 November 2023, the Blender.org website was affected by a DDoS attack, executed by a botnet with hundreds of IP addresses sending over 1.5 billion malicious requests, at a peak rate of 100,000 requests per second. The website was intermittently available for a few days until going offline on November 21st, end quote. So Blender was down for the better part of a week, and people were rightfully freaking out. I mean, who would attack an open source and free software? Because there is nothing to gain here. I absolutely can't think of anyone who would want Blender off the map. But what is a DDoS attack? For people who don't know, it is a cyber attack in which the attacker flat servers with internet traffic and requests to prevent users from accessing the online service or website, and the name itself is an abbreviation of denial of service attack. When there are multiple coordinated attacks at the same time, it becomes distributed denial of service, hence the name DDoS. Sometimes websites have trouble naturally from requests of actual humans, like for example, from what we have seen from websites such as BlenderMarket.com, especially during sale periods where it receives way more requests to access the site than it usually should, which can be solved by increasing the website's ability to serve more requests. But in the case of a DDoS attack, there has to be other measures. In the four days when the attack was happening, the team was attempting to block all the malicious IPs from the attackers. This actually proved to be futile as they quickly relaunched the attack from different locations. After four days, the team decided to move the core website to a secure service that provides DDoS protection like Cloudflare. And at the time of writing this video, Blender.org and most of its domains, I mean subdomains, are back online. A few days ago, Francesco shared an update that some users might face a challenge upon entering the website to verify that they are not a bot, which makes sense. But you might ask, what was the damage? There are multiple types of DDoS attacks, but usually they don't need a vulnerability to launch the attack, because they are just brute force attacks. A DDoS attack in the simplest forms is just overwhelming the server with as many requests as possible, so no intrinsic damage of the data can happen, at least if the hacker didn't find a vulnerability. Not to mention that Blender itself isn't like a profitable business, so I'm not sure what exactly was the aim here. One commenter said that there was an SEO projection over the summer targeting open source software sites, and Blender.org was one of them. The injections hijacked Google search results, so instead of going to the official website of Blender, you would end up in a carbon copy that also has very similar links and you can download Blender from there as well. So maybe all those users are added to the botnet unknowingly. But either way, this attack was probably not carried out by just one person. Most likely, it was a coordinated attack. Now, coming back to the timing of the attack, it was carried out right around the time the new release was about to drop, so it is very unlikely that this is a mere coincidence. And I have a theory. Maybe it is that one guy who tried Blender 
but his render didn't come out as great as he thought it would be. Jokes aside, while the attack itself didn't cause any damage, some people are speculating it might be someone who is testing their botnet as a means to advertise their services. Now, I know what most people are thinking. It was probably Autodesk or one of the major 3D software companies, which would be highly unlikely because simply that's not the Autodesk way or any big software company for that matter. Because they like the buy out the competition method, I can't imagine a large corporation is gonna resort to a DDoS attack. Just the idea that this could be public can cost them millions in fines and even more in bet PR. But is it a Blender hater? Most probably. And would that be an Autodesk user? Even more probable. Jokes aside, the attack was either probably carried out by someone with not much going on in their life and a ton of free time, or it was carried out by someone who is financially motivated. Now, did it delay or affect the release of Blender 4.0 in any shape or form? Meaning did the attack affect the schedule of the release of Blender? At the time of making this video, Blender 4 is already online and you can grab it from the official website. However, Blender was set to be released on the 14th of this month, I mean November 2023. But in the last minute, the team decided to push back the release by about a week, which was not unusual as the team does that sometimes if they feel like the build needed more work or if there was a critical bug, which is not good. So pushing the release date a bit isn't something unusual. After that, and exactly on the 17th, the team released the 4.0.1 version, which addresses about 12 serious bugs in Blender, some of which would cause a complete crash of the software. With version 4.0.2 set to be released later next month. So, on the 18th of this month, the attack happened. This means that the attack itself didn't particularly affect the release, but it did raise a lot of eyebrows, as people were flocking to the website to get the latest version of Blender. If you are unable to access the Blender website, I mean anytime this happens, you will find alternatives or mirrors, the best of which is Steam or Microsoft Store. If you go to Steam, you can grab Blender with the added benefit of counting your watch time or work time so you can put that on your resume and flex about your 15,000 hours in Blender. Now, for the reaction of the community, it was really bad, and no one liked it. Everyone voiced their disgust and shock that the attack happened in the first place, and how can anyone attack a website that offers open source software for free for the community and for everyone to use it and do what they love most. So, I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.